What's up guys, XM360 here, and in today's video I'm going to be doing another review of a Sanwoo Guardian series laser. This one is going to be their purple 405 nanometer 1.6 watt model with the optional grid groove handle style. So with all of that it retails for $210 without the battery. Um, with the battery there is an extra fee, it's like a couple of bucks. And then there's some other add-ons you can purchase as well below. And they sell these Guardian series lasers in several different wavelengths and powers all for different prices. Some of you might have just seen my most recent review of the blue version of this laser at 1 watt. And then they also sell a copper version of this laser with the grid groove handle kind of style and that's an additional $10 fee. Uh, the one I have here is not the copper version, it's just the standard stainless steel version. It's important to note that this laser does ship from China so you may see some delayed shipping times versus US mainland shipping. And some of the specs, they advertise this thing to weigh in at 155 grams with an advertised duty cycle of 40 seconds on off. All of the Guardian 405 nanometer models have a 40 second duty cycle, whereas all of the other Guardian models in red, green, and blue have an advertised duty cycle of 60 seconds. And the diode in this one, uh, Sanwu didn't really have much info on it other than that it is made by Hitachi. The Guardians also use a 20 millimeter copper heatsink and it runns on one 18350 flat top lithium ion battery. It's important that you get a flat top because if you do not, it will not fit this host properly. The unit also comes with driver protections like over discharge and overcharge and reverse polarity protection and comes with a one year warranty. This is the unit itself. You can see it looks different than your standard smooth stainless steel ones like the last one I reviewed. This one has the grid and groove handle design which I kind of prefer personally. I think it gives the laser a bit more character. Um, on the very top here you see me kind of messing around with the adjustable focus um, and then at the very bottom there's the tail cap with the on and off button. This is just a single mode laser not a multi mode and I can unscrew the cap on the very bottom to get to the battery housing and you'll notice a little white clear o-ring. Um, they advertise this laser as waterproof although they do not suggest that you put that to the test. I would call it more water resistant because I, I've used these in the rain at least my previous Sanwu lasers with no issues but I wouldn't do it unless you really have to. Um, so the battery goes in with the positive end facing the diode, negative end facing the tail cap and be careful where you're pointing it when you're screwing it all back together because that button might be engaged in the on mode. Uh, it doesn't appear that mine is right now so I'll just turn it on here to show you guys the little dot. And for anybody who hasn't had a purple laser before, um, look at a black light and it's, in my opinion anyway, very very similar to the color of a black light like you would see it like a club or a party or anywhere like that. Um, it's very similar to that UV black color. And everybody kind of has a different interpretation of how 405 nanometers looks, but to me it's just a completely pure purple. I don't really see any blue in it. And I'm now going to move on to showing you guys the laser in some different lighting levels. Um, first I wanted to show you guys the adjustable focus feature. And these Sanwu hosts are sometimes built so well and so compact that you can't even really see where the crease is that you're supposed to turn the laser to focus it in and out. On this particular model, it's at the kind of third groove down from the top. That's where you screw it in and out, and that's where you're going to use your adjustable focus. You can kind of see it right there. Using that focus cap, we can create a focal point where the beam uh, kind of forms an X, and the smallest point is going to be able to do some good burning. I will show you guys that later on in the video when I do the burn test. Moving on to some lighting levels, this one is a kind of somewhat dim indoor lighting setting. And the beam is visible looking down the axis of the laser, not necessarily looking from the side of the laser unless you're in a fairly dark room. Um, even at 1.6 watts or whatever power this laser ends up being, 405 nanometers is still one of the least visible wavelengths to the human eye besides the ones that are invisible to the human eye. So, you know, you got to expect this from a purple laser. Purple lasers typically are not that visible. And you need to make sure you use laser safety glasses, especially with these 405 nanometer lasers, because they can be so strong yet so invisible to the human eye. 
you can end up really causing some significant eye damage because you don't realize that the reflection of the beam is hitting your eye. So please wear some laser safety glasses when using this laser at all times. Um, moving on to an outdoor daytime setting. The divergence on the beam is very good, uh, surprisingly good, however, this is a deceiving shot. Cameras pick up the 405 nanometer color way better than the human eye does, so you're, what you're seeing right here, that dot way down on that rock wall, that is like just barely, barely visible to my eye and it doesn't show up as a perfect dot like that, it just kind of looks like a very, very faint purple blob. So don't expect very good visibility during the daytime because it just it blends in with the color of sunlight and all the light and you're not going to see much dot visibility at all during the daytime but the camera kind of plays tricks with you and picks it up a lot better than you can and then just moving on to a nighttime setting the beam of the laser is very visible looking down the axis of the laser and kind of slightly slightly visible looking at the side and again this is playing tricks on you with the camera because the camera is making this thing look super bright and it's making it look blue as well when in reality this is purple and it's not quite as bright as it looks right here so I'm now gonna move on to the LPM testing and there was this kind of weird little issue that I had with the focusing caps but I'm gonna kind of wait till the reviewing aspect at the end of the video to talk about that. So with these tests I kind of got some interesting results um, and it, it's gonna kinda sound like I'm referring to a DPSS laser when I'm talking about this but going from a cold start I would get a result of between 1400 milliwatts to 1500 milliwatts so 1 1.4 to 1 1.5 watts. Uh, the maximum reading I ever got on this one was I think 1.53 watts um, but it would typically sit at about 1.45 watts or 1450 milliwatts when I would initially start using the laser with a fully charged battery and this is on my laser B A LPM so after the first test that usually sat around 1450 the second test if I did it immediately after say giving the laser a 60 second break I would get a result of around 1350 milliwatts and the following results afterwards would sit around 1350, uh, 1330, um, 1.33 watts. And the reason you're not seeing any of those 1300 tests in here is because for this particular testing session I decided to give longer breaks so a lot of the results sat in the 1400 range. But I just, I thought all of this was interesting and I wanted to share it with you guys because I've always had very, um, very stable power readings with my diode lasers, but this one was exhibiting behavior more like a DPSS laser. This laser had a lot of variability to the power readings. I mean, they all sat within a kind of like 200 to 250 milliwatt range, 1300 to 1550, but inside that range, they were kind of all over the place depending on how quickly or how much breaks I was giving, and if it was a cold start, and there was a lot of different variables to this one, but I felt like this one was... Um, kind of surprising as far as the power readings go and I wanted to show you guys this one particular clip right here uh, Because I think it's important. This was me pushing the laser too far past its duty cycle um, And I noticed kind of a dimming while the laser was in use It didn't cause any permanent damage and I shut the laser off right away It was still giving the same power readings afterwards But it, I think it's just important to note that you shouldn't push it past its duty cycle or you may see some things like that begin to occur so I'm now going to move on to the burn test and I'm going to start with some little red top matches here. I have my focal point set about a foot away from the tip of the laser and I'm doing this over a bathtub filled with water. Um, I have my laser safety glasses on so make sure you take all the proper safety precautions when you are doing a burn test like this. And by using the smoke you can see kind of see where I have the focal beam uh, focal point set to right here. Um, I just focus the laser in so that I am burning with the very smallest part of the laser beam. So it lights the matches pretty much instantly, moving on to a small piece of wood. It's not really going to light this on fire, but it is going to carve a lot of black etch marks and it's kind of like you're writing on it in real time with a pen because it makes those black marks so quickly. Moving on to a small section of black electric tape and it cuts through this stuff. Pretty much instantly as well you might have to go back and forth once or twice just to get the small strands that you may have missed and then I'm gonna do a small piece of newspaper 
and it doesn't light this on fire it kind of does the same thing as the wood it, it burns black little marks on it and holes in it uh, pretty much instantly but I was not able to necessarily ignite a fire with it I'm gonna do a balloon next I'm just gonna drop it over the beam and it just pops the balloon instantly and then I'm gonna do some more matches and I'm gonna do the wooden section of the match too and while I'm doing this, I'm going to kind of move on to the reviewing aspect of this and talking about what I liked and disliked about the laser. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is the issues I had with the focusing cap on this particular laser. Um, you're going to see it right here. It's the one on the left. It didn't have space for threads on the top. It's almost like the lens on it was installed so high up that it takes up all the thread space. I emailed Sanwu about this and they said it was because they installed a G2 lens with a 9mm long holder. Um, so that's why it took up all the space on the threads and I wouldn't be able to use attachments on it. And I was fine with that. I didn't really have any need to use attachments on this. But then when I first started doing the LPM test with the cap on the left, I was getting very strange readings. Um, my readings were only coming out to be about 900 milliwatts every single time. And I troubleshooted for a while, but I could not get any different readings besides 800 to 900 milliwatts. So after talking with Sanwu, they suggested maybe trying one of the focus caps from the other two Guardians they sent me. Uh, they sent me a 50 milliwatt 520 nanometer and a 1 watt 445. And these were both in the standard stainless steel host, not the one with grid and groove sandals. Um, so I tried the one on the right. And I got these normal or more normal readings of the 1.3 to 1.5 watts. So something with that cap on the left was restricting me by 4 to 500 milliwatts. And I still haven't completely figured it out yet. Uh, but that was kind of an issue for me. I was able to solve it myself. But if I didn't have the extra cap there, I'm not sure how I would have solved the issue. Besides that, I didn't really have any major cons with this laser. Uh, there was one little issue where sometimes I would insert the battery and the laser would not power on. It was uh, like the battery was not sitting in the housing properly. So when that did happen, I would just unscrew the laser, take the battery out, and just reinsert it. And that would always fix the problem in one try. Um, I loved the power on this thing and the visibility. This thing was insane for a purple laser completely blows out of the water any purple laser I've ever owned before. The focus cap did work good um, for burning. It burned stuff very well, uh, just as good as any of my other lasers at the same power. The beam was nicely aligned, there wasn't any crookedness to it, and the divergence was very very nice. Even at a distance uh, when you can't necessarily tell, if you use a camera to pick up that dot a little better you'll notice that it's a very very fine dot. There's also two little holes towards the bottom of the laser to attach a lanyard. As far as the price goes, I, I don't really know necessarily if I can say much to the price because, I mean, I know what I would pay for green and blue lasers because I buy those all the time, but I don't buy purple lasers that often, so I'm not, I don't really want to be the one to say if this is too little or too much. Uh, but the price is 210 for this model. If you want the smooth version, it's $200. And then there's the extra add-ons you can get as well. I thought the power outputs with the corrected lens was very fair. 1450 for an average I thought was reasonable for a 1.6 rated laser. And I believe the alternate cap I was using is utilizing a 3 element lens. So maybe if that one did have a G2 in it, we'd get higher power readings. Although supposedly a G2 was what was used in the original cap. So... I'm not sure on all that with the focus cap, but I did like the power readings when I did correct that. So that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on this laser. In the video description, I'll put a link to where you can buy this, and I'll also put a link to some good laser safety glasses for this one. If you guys found this video helpful in any way at all, hit that like button down below. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button for lots of awesome laser reviews just like this one. And as always guys, thank you for watching from XM360.